dear friends this is Dipesh once again I am here to demonstrate one use case of TensorFlow this time I will try to detect Meteor inside a video so for this I am using the videos from my friend Dave Kodama who has given permission to use two of his videos uh, for this experiment I will use this video the 2009 Leonid meteor shower as one of my test cases as you can see that there are some meteors which are flying in the sky okay so but we, we do not know when the meteor will be flying through the air so I would like to take the pictures of the these meteors and save it at some folder okay so I will use tensorflow for doing that next I will also use the same model to test on another video in this case it will be 2016 Parseed meteor shower I will use this old model to to detect these meteors okay so let's let's start once again I'd like to thank Dave for giving me these videos I am really thankful to him he has got some wonderful videos that can be used to do some really cool experiments so let's start I have I have copied some of the images of the meteors for the training purpose now if you notice that these pictures are color pictures so these are my training images you see in each of these small pictures there is one streak of the meteor that you can see okay so you can see something like this but you may notice that this picture is not very clear so if we train using this picture maybe the trainer training will not be strong enough so I would like to train with a very high degree of accuracy therefore what I'll do is I'll do an image processing on top of this I will do a edge detection and and save the images after I have detected the edges so here I have done a canny edge detection and I have saved it saved each of those images in a separate folder so you can see that here there is a positive a folder which contains all the positive images with these lines indicating meteors and in the other folder I have got the negative images images that do, that do not contain any meteor okay so after that I I'll train the tensorflow model to understand that which are positive and which are negative so I have already done that following the same technique that I have used in the previous videos so my model is ready so my model is ready over here along with the levels I'll show you how I have done the edge detection first so here I have used uh, Python OpenCV and, and NumPy and for each of the files 
present in the directory the directory is uh, negative or positive I have detected I have performed a canny edge detection and then I have written it into the output form, output directory that's it after this I have run the tensorflow transfer learning process by which the model has been created next I will used these two videos I have named them devleonid.avi and devparsi.avi so I have used the Leonid shower to train and I will use the same model to detect meteors on the Parseed video also so I'll use same model to detect meteors in two different videos this will demonstrate the robustness of the model you'll see this is the this is the program to detect the meteor here I am I'm using dayparseed.avi please note that the model has been trained on the Leonid meteors okay here is the location of the trained graph and it will keep on reading image by image taking one image at a time from the video and then it will do the prediction and give the score now if I detect it as a positive and if I think that the score is greater than 95% which is score if the score is greater than 0 0.95 I will consider it to be a positive identification of the meteor and if such a case happens then it will immediately write that image into an output directory so let's start okay I have already started I'll show you my output directory you see the output directory is right now empty it is running output directory is still empty I am expecting to find a few meteors from this video you will notice that there are no meteors at this point and then suddenly some meteors are, are visible I'll try to track these meteors okay let's go back and see whether it could it could detect a few not yet as you can see the percentage is 0 0.8 all the time 0.91 not yet 0.95 unless it is a greater than 0.95 I will not consider it to be a positive identification so let's wait there is still no sign of the meteor according to the program okay looks like there is one meteor let's see yes it has found out if you can see now yes there is a meteor over here you can see the meteor has been tracked yes the meteor has been tracked again and the meteor has been tracked here as well so tensorflow has been successful in tracking meteor using a different model and tested on a different video so it proves that the model generated by transfer learning is very robust and it 
can be used again and again on different videos okay I'll stop it right now okay now let's go back to the program and run on the Leonid Meteor okay my output file will be different in this case let's make another one out L out L okay now let's run it again this time it is detecting the Leonid meteors you will notice this video is used right now you will notice that there will be a lot of meteors okay you can see there, there are a lot of meteors so I expect the program to find a lot of meteors let's see okay it has been able to find some meteors I think yeah I think it has detected these you can see that this is the count of the total number of frames and this is the count of the total number of frames where the positive identification happened okay let's see whether it has been able to detect a few or not okay I have got large number of frames okay these frames are from the start of the video so let's wait for some more time okay let's see now the program has been running for around three minutes okay it has been able to detect the meteor you see that here the meteor is visible clearly so this is the first positive identification of the meteor so you can see that uh, tensorflow can actually detect meteor automatically this can be used to detect meteors in other videos as well so but as you can see that the training may be inaccurate because uh, my the number of cases that I have used as positive and negative uh, test cases were very less around 20 to 30 maximum whereas tensorflow expects around maybe 100 or more so if we increase the total number of uh, training cases then the then the model will become more robust so it it proves to a certain extent that tensorflow can work highly efficiently with less number of training cases as well which shows that the model is very efficient and the algorithms are excellent uh, and they can be applied to a large number of use cases so thanks very much for watching this video please like subscribe and comment below if there are any other use cases that you will like to see uh, how I can apply tensorflow on those use cases I will try my best to work on those use cases and uh, thank you very much and see you again in the next video Till then, bye-bye. And thanks Dave Kodama for giving me the videos to make this uh, presentation successful. Otherwise, uh, it would have been very difficult to find a proper video using which I could prove my concept. 
so thanks again dev kodama and thanks to all of you for uh, watching my video and see you again next time